everyone, this is Julia. And this is Chris, and this is Shiny episode number 19 of A Bar Above's Mixology Talk podcast. We're here to demystify mixology and help you make some damn good drinks and make some great cocktails the easy way. So we mentioned last week how we are absolutely varied in tomatoes from our garden. So many tomatoes. Thankfully, the harvest is finally coming to an end, but we still have dozens of tomatoes to use up. So today, we're going to see if we can use them up in cocktails. Yeah, I'm excited about that. You're excited about anything with cocktails. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Kind of explains the podcast. Right. And uh, just to give everybody a little bit of an insight, I have been working on a cocktail for about five years now that involves tomatoes. So we'll get to that uh, later on down the uh, podcast. You know, some people can design a cocktail in like, you know, it takes them a couple of days. Some people can even do it in a couple of hours. But I say, you know, we just take it to a whole new level. We're making it years. Yeah, this is kind of like um, my Moby Dick. I am. <laughs> this is my great white whale. This This cocktail <laughs> in particular is Something I look forward to every summer. How's that? Are you going to name it the Great Great White Whale? I am. Yeah, it's. I think we've already done that. Actually, it might be Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve. This, this cocktail is named Steve. Steve. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple common tomato recipes out there, and you can probably already think of the first one, and that is the Bloody Mary. And basically what it is is tomato juice um, with vodka, typically, and a bunch of of things to make it spiced and spicy right exactly so the common recipe is typically like tomato juice um vodka and worcestershire sauce say that three times fast after a couple of drinks uh (laughs) salt pepper typically celery salt tabasco um and you can put anything in there it's like one of those kitchen sink recipes you know uh the more the merrier in your uh, spicy or your bloody mary recipe it might actually work out better um, but that's a classic brunch cocktail, and I'm sure we have all had it, you know, with a celery stick and olive and salt, pepper, rim, the whole nine yards. All that good stuff. Right. But one of the uh, less common cocktails that is equally as good, if not better, is a cocktail or a drink called the Michelada. And this is something I think I had for my fir- the first time in Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's really tasty. And um, if you don't like Bloody Marys because they're too thick and a little too savory... This is a really great alternative to you. Essentially, it's a Bloody Mary with beer. That's been cut with beer. Exactly. And actually, I quite enjoyed it because um, I tip- I'm i a huge wimp when it comes to spicy stuff. I'm going to own that right now. <laughs> now the whole world knows. Yeah. Um, and Bloody Marys are almost always too spicy for me so the michelada was a great option because the carbonation in the beer actually kind of cut through that spiciness a little bit yeah and there's a lot more or a lot less alcohol per volume and you know the the what the beer has a lot of water content so it really thins out the the bloody mary um juice the tomato juice so it's a much lighter way and it's just a really great way to uh to start a sunday morning (laughs) Any morning. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, that's about all the common cocktails um, that use tomato uh, juice. There is the Red Snapper, which is essentially um, the Bloody Mary. but um, That's and, with gin, right? Right, with gin. And you can and do a Bloody Maria, you know, variations upon a Bloody Mary with different base spirits. But basically, they're all kind of the same drink. Right. Um and that's pretty much about it, is like we talked about. Um, so when it comes to using tomatoes in cocktails, there's really two ways to do it. Well, I'm disregarding garnish for now. You can always throw a tomato on as garnish. It may not always work, but sure, go to town. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> there's really two key um, ingredients that come out of tomatoes. The first we've talked about already, which is tomato juice. And the second is much less common, and that's tomato water. So what is the difference between the two? So tomato juice obviously has everything in it. We all, we've all seen it. That's what Bloody Marys are made out of. It's red. It's pulpy. It's kind of thick. Um, it's a little bit sweet, a little bit acidic, all at the same time. Um, very, very savory. And tomato water is what happens when you puree um, a bunch of tomatoes and put it in some cheesecloth to let it just kind of drip out. And what happens is all of the color kind of falls out, and what you're left with is water that tastes like tomato and it's slightly yellow colored yeah without the sort of pulp component so yeah. it's it's um i wouldn't call it totally transparent but it's definitely got a translucency to it and it's certainly not the uh thick red color that comes with tomato juice right um so i've been experimenting with tomato water in mo- the moby dick cocktail that i mentioned earlier <laughs> is essentially um my revisiting of this cocktail 
every single year during the height of the tomato season. So my idea is to get something that is actually crystal clear and looks like water, but tastes like tomatoes. And the problem is that um, anytime I make tomato water, there's always that kind of residual ye off yellow color to it, which isn't bad. Um, but I'm really trying to kind of perfect it to make it completely clear. We haven't quite figured it out yet, but if you're interested in seeing the latest um, the latest experiment in our search for clear tomato water, check out the video that we posted this last Monday or head on over to mixologytalk.com slash 19 and we'll give you a link. It's got a really cool name too. It's called cryo freezing. How cryo -freezing. cool is that? You're such a nerd. I am. I can't help myself. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's essentially the ways that you could use tomato in a cocktail, tomato juice, tomato water. You can definitely muddle in some fresh tomatoes and, you know, some cucumber in there and some Hendrix gin. Um, but those are the two most common ways that you're going to see them in cocktails. So how, uh, th there's sort of two good options there. How, in your opinion, would you use tomato juice differently from tomato water? Well, tomato juice doesn't really need a lot of alteration at all because it's got so much body it's got so much character to itself that you just add some base beer to it and like we talked about you would have a pretty decent cocktail after some spices and stuff that you add to yeah, it. Yeah, it's got a lot of flavor. Now with tomato water um, it is really kind of more aromatic and really delicate so um, you're going to have to use a good amount of it in a cocktail and you can't really rely on traditional like cocktail methods so you know adding lemon juice and then sweetener to balance it out is just going to Take you on this roller coaster of unfortunate drink choices, basically. Roller coaster of unfortunate drink choices. We've all been on that, that roller coaster. That should be a band. <laughs> We've all been on that roller coaster. No, We've all been there. Um, but it goes from kind of tart to sweet to savory, and just yeah. you add salt in there, it just gets really, really strange. We tried that during some of the experimentation that we were trying for the cryo freezing video. And it, we just couldn't make it work. At the end of the day, uh, sweetness does not work with tomato water. It's just too weird. Right. So just be careful with it. And, um, you know, definitely want to balance it out with a little bit of acid. Um, I think in this cocktail, I actually used vinegar, just a splash mm -hmm. of, um, I think it's sugar cane and vinegar. And it turned out really well, added uh, some other ingredients to it also. Um, but I think this is probably the best version of this cocktail that I made. Yeah, it was um, fantastic. And again, um, I think just because the tomato wa water is so much more delicate and aromatic than the tomato juice, I think you just need to be a little bit careful with the other stuff that you're throwing in the drink. I, I, I do not recommend going to town with whatever kitchen sink you want to throw in if you're using tomato water because you do run the risk of completely overwhelming that tomato flavor. Right. And... um so my idea for the Bloody Mary is essentially, like I said, a clear Bloody Mary. So that has a lot of issues with it already. The minute you add any kind of Worcestershire sauce or any of those classic seasonings, um, it's, it's going to alter anymore. the color. <laughs> so yeah, what I, uh, what I did was actually created more of a savory salt where I took all the um, Bloody Mary seasonings, I added it to a bunch of salt, and then dehydrated it in a microwave for like three minutes. And it turned out really good. Um, yeah, it was really interesting. Basically, what Chris did, was, it was it, it was almost like a martini, like a dirty martini, because it was a very savory drink. But he rimmed the glass with this amazing spice, like spicy spice mixture, which gave it the um, the sort of spice component that you would expect it in a Bloody Mary without actually putting it in the drink and making it, you know, sort of a weird color. Yeah, so you kind of got two things happening there. You have that really cool clear martini or... Bloody Mary, essentially. And then you have all of the flavor um, on the outside of the rim, which is kind of dark and kind of... So you have a big contrast in the, in the color and of the glass and stuff. It, it, it turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with how you that know, one turned out. If we're going to be real foodies, we have to use the word deconstructed at some point. I don't want to use that word. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a deconstructed Bloody Mary. <laughs> and it can, gets constructed in your mouth. In your mouth. <laughs> 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 but there's also a couple other really common flavors that you can add to this. You know, um, spicy notes definitely work with this kind of savory co style of cocktail. Um, one of the other things we I like to use is celery bitters and celery salt. They just tomatoes and celery have a natural kind of draw to each other and stuff. They do. So and basically anything that has that sort of earthy component. So if you think about it, uh, one of the I I would be willing to to say hard and fast, do not use 
barrel aged spirits with tomato. And the reason for that is that with the time in the barrel comes that sort of vanilla baking spice sweetness, which is really great in other drinks, but it just does not work with tomato because like we talked about, the sweetness just creates a very confusing experience. Yeah. So like gin and tequila are just natural choices. And if you have Bloody Marys with vodka, do yourself a favor and try it with gin. Oh my God. Oh, it's absolutely. It's so much better. And tequila as well. A really good tequila with a Bloody Mary mix is absolutely fantastic. Blanco tequila. Yes, Blanco tequila. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's just something to keep in mind. I think with tomatoes, you definitely want to stay on the savory side of things. Spiciness is great. Um, things that bring um, herbal notes, um, spiced qualities are all a good, good option. And uh, definitely spiciness, of course. You see that all the time in tomato drinks. And you can't really go wrong if you have it with a slice of pizza. I mean, they're just natural together. Does that qualify as a garnish? It's like an ultimate food and cocktail pairing right there. That's awesome. <laughs> we should write a book. <laughs> no, we don't have any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is about it. So tomatoes are not a common cocktail ingredient, but I think we kind of gave a couple good ideas for how to use them. If you do live in the San Francisco Bay Area and want some tomatoes, please come and save us from ourselves. Oh, please. <laughs> Head over to mixologytalk.com slash 19. Leave us a comment and uh, we'll hook you up. So next week, we have an interview with the one and only Brian Johnson from the YouTube channel, Better Cocktails at Home. So I think this is going to resonate with a lot of people that uh, listen to this uh, podcast. So if you're into that sort of thing, definitely make sure you listen next week. So back on the subject of tomatoes for a minute, we mentioned it earlier, but I just wanted to call it out one more time. We made a really interesting video that came out just a couple days ago about the cryo-freezing process, which is basically clarifying the tomato juice by freezing and unfreezing and things like that. So definitely go check it out. You can check out the link at mixologytalk.com slash 19. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.